IPA, which I normally don't like IPAs, but this Gamma Bomb by Warped Wing is delicious, and I've got it in I my just, awesome koozie. I love that koozie. That koozie cracks me up. But hey, you, yeah, hey, you, come oh, on. Oh, we're live. Oh, down. shit. We're live. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella, and as always, my partner in crime. John Jacobs. Thank you so much for joining us, and happy holidays to everyone out there. Uh, we're getting into the Christmas spirit. We're doing. I'm doing my best. Like I said, this fight took place on Christmas Day, so I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Rocky Four Christmas movie, absolutely. Yeah. And your Gamma Bomb bomb has a little bit of Christmassy colors to it. Put, put it up real quickly. There. I mean, well, yeah. Here, it's if you guys That's are awesome. unfamiliar, I'll go ahead and promo them. Warped Wing, Microbrewery, Gamma Bomb. This stuff is delicious. I don't like IPAs at all, but I like this one. And I also yeah. like the Hydro Haze, if you can find that. It's a little bit more harder to find. So, And also, your koozie is probably one of the best party hosts ever. <laughs> it's I like mean, he just needs at the bottom, like the most interesting man. Like, stay thirsty, thirsty my friends. <laughs> we'll have to worry about that after the first drink. Oh, the dark humor is beautiful beautiful it's that's how we get through the holidays anyway so let's bring out our our guests today they are diehard home alone fans as we are as well so let's bring up uh kelly kraus and comedian dan brady yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. with that we talk about the home alone all right so real quick before we jump in yes i've got to say this is kelly's first time on the show she's a long time viewer first time on the show I've known Kelly for like 13, 14 years, and yep. we used to work together. And the great thing about Kelly was is that she had more OCD about things than I did. So every month she would come down and she would write all of my schedule out on my marker board so that it looked beautiful and perfect for the month. Because every time I did it, she was like, no, 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 this is a he disaster. Has- I'm doing it. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Because he has serial killer handwriting, like it. I, I do my serial killers, terrible. whatever. You mean he? You mean he writes everything with cut out magazine pieces? I mean that would have been more legible than what he put on that board because <laughs> nobody doctor, was knowing. I have doctor handwriting for anybody that knows me knows. Like my kid yeah. can't even read my. I can't even when I write journals or write jokes or or like anything. Like I can't read half of my writing. That's why I just started doing everything on my phone. Because I can't read it when I write it in a notebook. Everything you read, everything you write is just an ultimatum. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Pretty much <laughs> with your letters. Uh, Dan uh, is Dan a, the man. He's back. Third time to me. Third time here on the show. Yes. Stand-up comic. Uh, I've known him for twenty-four months or so. Uh, I'm trying to throw the high numbers up there. It sounds. Oh like yeah. You. Yeah, I'm gonna make you sound. I'm gonna make our friendship sound like a baby. Actually, we we hit the we hit the two years mark in November. Oh, so then twenty five yeah. months. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We'll we'll keep it fancy. Going like that. strong. Get strong. <laughs> okay, I got uh, the link posted everywhere, so now I can focus on the conversation. Yeah. First time I first time I met Dan in person, I did a show at a movie theater. Which little fun trivia fact at the movie theater I did the show at the next show for next week was Thanks Killing, which is a good friend of ours. Ryan Francis who's in it. So it was kind of like this weird, this is like the weirdest full circle show right now. So that's it really so is. Cool. Uh, so let's get right down to it. Let's talk. Let's just talk about it. Let's just do it. Home alone, folks. I, this movie. Yes. You got your hand up. You got real, right. real quick. Just real quick. Before we get into the whole thing, we're either, I'll, be, I'll bet Dan was alive. When Home Alone came out, I'm pretty sure I know Kelly was because we're around the same age. But Jesse, you weren't nope. even alive when this movie came out, were you? I I, I, I liked it. I was technically in the womb at this point. So I mean, yeah, you were DNA. I mean, where does? Point. I mean, not to get too philosophical here, but where does life begin? Yeah, you know, uh, so... it definitely doesn't begin three years before you're born as like DNA yeah. that hasn't even been created Listen. yet. For I argument's mean, sake, I'll say I lived in my dad's ball sack to win, all right? So, yeah, I mean, you, you were still come at that time. I, I mean, still- so is the Goldbergs like a history lesson for you, or how does that <laughs> work? Oh, good one, Kelly. I, I agree with you. It probably Why was. That's how Jesse learned about channel? everything. <laughs> it's like how you go to the older kid in the neighborhood to learn about sex because he's got playboys and he's, <laughs> he's been through sex ed he knows well jesse had to watch the goldberg to get caught up on everything that was good in the world i don't want to do that i just know you i can just do that with you i i, I try to steer you down the correct path grasshopper yes yes 
<laughs> but anyway, so Home Alone came out in 1992, a uh, year before me. Uh, so we, I like to call that BHM before the hot mess, uh, which is I. Um, but anyways, so this movie is what we were kind of talking about off uh, air. Revolutionary as a, not just a Christmas movie, but a movie. Because this is one of those movies where it feels like everything after imitates this type of storyline. Like how Die Hard was Die Hard. There was no Die Hard before Die Hard. Like that 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 story formula originated there, and that's why you had Die Hard on a bus, Die Hard on a cruise ship, Die Hard on an airplane. Now it's Home Alone, and everything is Home Alone in a hotel, Home Alone this. That's how and, – and this movie is written by John Hughes, which ironically enough, the last show we did was a John Hughes movie as well. Uh, yeah. presentation so I, I like there's this cool connection and this movie was scored beautifully by john williams who's oh, known yeah. who does the in, indiana jones star wars harry potter forget about it you know he's doing forget good he got nominated it. twice for an oscar for this movie but this movie not only has uh great music great directing great writing but it has uh, the charm of macaulay culkin who's just killing it then you got stern and pesci who masterfully man if you never looked at them as physical comics Think again with this movie. I mean, Great. just top to bottom, this is a classic holiday film. Am I not? Am I not right by saying that? Plus, I have to watch it all the time. Um, my yes. husband is so sick of me watching this movie when it comes on. He hears the music and he just walks right out the door. He's like, "No, I'm not doing it again." I he hears the my... angels. He hears the angel choirs. Na, na, yeah, na, right. Na. Yeah. Out. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to go sit on the deck and smoke a cigarette. It's not going to happen. He's not watching. It. So, yes. He's the now, quintessential grumpy old man, though. I mean, it's Bob. So, that's just who Bob is. Now, Kelly, does your daughter like Home Alone? Because mine doesn't really connect with it at all. I've tried. Well, she watched it again this morning. So, oh. yes, I'm going to say um, her favorite is, uh, well, I guess we'll wait for the scenes. I'll let you know what her favorite scene is because it's okay. kind of the favorite trap. But, yes, um, she does watch it. And that's a new development this year, which makes me really, really happy and feel like I did something good as a parent. There you go. There you go. So I'm hopeful. I told my daughter that while we're off on winter break – that we're going to watch both Home Alones and we're watching Ernest Saves Christmas. So we'll see there if you she's with that. Yes. Now, Bray, Which, that uh, a whole other episode. Let's do that next Christmas, Jesse, or next, uh, next holiday. Let's do Ernest Saves Christmas. Great we movie. We do a whole show on Ernest. Let's face it. Yeah. Ernest well, Saves that, Halloween. Dude, yeah. Oh, Ernest oh, Scared, oh, scared Stupid, Stupid with the Troll. I love that one, man. Yes. I love that movie. <laughs> the opening credits with that song. It, oh, it's so great. Oh, yeah. And the best part is they explain his stupidity in that movie. They it's do. A curse, they do. Which is just art. Now, Dan, how do you connect with this movie, man, uh, for the holidays? I I will tell you, uh, I watched the first two growing up, but when I was sick, uh, my father had actually rented Home Alone 3 for me, and that is... Oh. I was 9 or 10 when I watched it, and I enjoyed it. Dan, That's I enjoyed right. it, too. Don't worry. Don't don't feel Young ashamed. Kid, I, I loved it. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. We overlooked the fact that some kid fought against four Korean terrorist hired secret agents. Okay, and I will overlook that shit to the day I'm day I die, man. I mean, but that kid grew up to become Jack Bauer, so I guess but, there was something positive out of it. Exactly. If you look at it, like, because I watched the first two today, the traps and stuff in the first movie is about six minutes. A good chunk of the Home Alone three movie is about him fighting off these people. Yeah. In the original, there's like four or five minutes of him actually going Joe yeah. toe to toe with Joe Pesci. Yeah. But one I, of the I things that. I noticed today is even I don't know if this is the right word, but the cinematography, like mm -hmm. when he mm -hmm. talks to the camera, that was something new, you know. Yeah. yeah. And that was pretty, you know, revolutionary, I guess, in terms of like filmmaking. Sure. Yeah, they hadn't. Uh, they didn't do a lot of fourth wall stuff back then. So uh, you're right. That was absolutely thing. And I think that um, building off of what you had said, Dan, is that that's what allows the viewer to connect with Kevin and relate to him, develop a relationship, understand his complex relationships, because you feel like you're there with him and he is there with you, and it allows you to go on that journey with him which is something absent from the other films, plus this new horrible one that they made. <laughs> well, I watched 20 it. minutes of that. 
We'll get oh, to, so we'll bad. get to that. I have a couple punches I want to get in on that. But go go ahead, get your punches in, Jesse. If you liked it, that's fine. But I'm no, I it. hate it. I didn't like it, dude. I did not like that one. I I okay. stayed watching until Pete Holmes went off camera, and then I'm like, I have no interest in this. <laughs> yeah, I I held in there because I I it turned into I hope this is good. I don't like this, and then it became like the equivalent of hate fucking watching. Like, you know, yeah. like, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to get to the fucking end of this. You know what I mean? And then I'm never going to call you again. Like, it was like, I mean, oh, so bad. I can't wait to rip it apart. Uh, but I, I do have a question for Kelly. Kelly, did you actually see the first Home Alone in the movie theater? I did, but that was a couple weeks after it was out. It wasn't opening weekend. I remember everybody was at school. They were talking about it. And, you know, I, we even went to it twice after that while it was still in the theaters. But yeah. yes, we did. Yeah, I, I think I saw it like with my parents, my birth father, my aunt and uncle. Like I went several times with different yeah. people because uh, it was just huge. Like when this movie came out, it was sold out like every weekend. Everyone was talking about it. it. I mean, I was nine when it, it came was the out. Biggest, it was the biggest live action comedy. Uh, it, I think it was box office recording until um, Hangover 2, if I remember, if I recall. Like this, this held a title. Like this yeah. is how strong the movie is. Hangover Two came out what? Like uh, let's say I'm gonna just say 2013 because that and sounds it wasn't right. Wasn't that great compared to the first one? Yeah, which ironically, Hangover Two pulled a Home Alone Two, which I always found that hysterical. Uh, you be careful what you say about Home Alone Two, man. Wait, wait, wait! I didn't say anything bad about Home Alone Two. Oh, Home you Alone insinuated 2, it right there. Home Alone Two was the first to do it, and Hangover did it. Two did it bad. That's all I'm saying. I love Home Alone Two. I ain't talking no shit about that movie. All right, you watch your mouth. I'm I'm watching, but anyways. So let's uh let's get right. We kind of talked about the what made it a classic, but I want to go around real quickly and just give one thing that you feel defined this movie for a generation. So uh, Kelly, what do you, what's something that you feel defined this movie? That's why every Christmas it's on TV. Um, I'm I'm gonna go not necessarily with the plot or the script, but the music to find it because oh, to me when yeah. that happens, it was primo. Um, when yeah. that when I hear that, I it is Christmas to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Like John John Williams, he, you know he fucking he, they were like we just need a song just just to open the movie. I got it, and then the and then the, yeah. the piano caught fire. Everything was like. He, they, they had to burn down the studio after he was done because nothing better was oh, done yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> John Williams was sitting out there and be like, how you like that shit? <laughs> As he should. As he should. As he should. Uh, Dan, how about you? What, what do you feel defines this movie for the generation? Because essentially it's kids against adults. Yeah. Like every adult in the first movie is an idiot. Uh, even even the kids approaching adulthood. So essentially, this entire movie is about children versus adults. And it says, like, yeah, even though you're small, even though you're young, you can still triumph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and and it's what's also really good. I think that scene really rings home when he's with uh, the uh, old man in the church. You know, everybody looks over oh, the person as a human being. Yeah, and he's the only one that talks to him. Not only, not only gets advice from him but gives advice to him and then at the end of the movie he goes to the window and he sees his granddaughter for the first like that warms your heart not for the yeah. first time but you know what i mean it warms your heart you know so yeah no i totally agree it does give that off uh john how about you i don't know man that old man gives me bad vibes like he was two scenes away from pulling a michael jackson with macaulay Culkin. so <laughs> i was a little concerned at that point He's walking with I the don't, shovel. He, yeah. he looks he looks more like Albert Fish. So if you're familiar he with that. He does. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Yes. He's got yeah. the nail studded paddle in yeah. the bottom of the salt can. <laughs> like Peanut butt butter. Driven. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not happy about that, but yes, that's yeah. very true. I'm so, never going to watch that ever again. <laughs> I want to build off of both Kelly and Dan because they're absolutely right. Kelly with the music, not only for John Williams' score, which he has a very trans-Siberian orchestra sound to it, which is fantastic. Yeah. There's also a little, like, horror, I think. Like, the whole Home Alone theme 
it's always like dark when it plays. There's always a storm brewing. And I really like that atmosphere that it builds. Like there's a little bit of fear there because you're going to be a nine year old alone for the first time, you know? Yeah. But, um, well, and then even what, like what, the furnace in his basement, too. Sorry to cut you yeah. off. But no, you're fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With the imagining the, the furnace and whatnot. And then uh, to what Dan was saying about uh, the kids versus adults, absolutely. And I think that's why kids our age, when we watched it, when it came out, we laughed because it was the kids against the parents. The parents laughed because the kid was kicking the adult's ass and they thought it was hilarious. And I think when you combine all of those with such a likable character like Macaulay Culkin was at that time, and then you give him a hell of a supporting cast, Joe Pesci. Daniel Stern, Catherine O'Hare, and John Hurd. You surrounded him with good actors that could play off of him and he off of them. Yeah. Uh, it just it was it was it was just a hit because all of those things fit perfectly together. And I mean, obviously Macaulay Culkin stalled the show, and it's sad that he never got the full career that he should have had because of his parents. Yeah, but hey. We're going to go through a Macaulay call uh, I mean, He's coming back, man. He was phenomenal at AHS, man. He's coming back. He's and he's like back. off the drugs, Macaulay Culkin, too, which is fantastic. Uh, real quick before we transition to our next segment, we got to give a shout-out to Tom. There you go, Tom. Yes, this episode is the shit. We were waiting to do this episode. <laughs> What's and up, then, Tom? And then Ted Wood giving some love to Kelly over there, the only person that could uh, Kevin in the eyes without bending down. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Ted. Wait, wait, what does that mean, Kevin? It means I'm short. (laughs) Got it. Okay. I was like thinking, like, do you use Kevin as a verb? What does this mean? Like, does this mean that Kelly can make really good traps? Which that would be awesome. Because then I have no doubt she can. I'm sure Kelly can pull out the best Rue Goldberg traps you've ever seen. Evil genius, right here. All right. (laughs) Maybe for next year we'll have to have you build. What you know we should do? We should we should have people build their best uh, Home Alone trap contest. Oh, that would be great! What next next and, year? Next I'm dead year. serious. Next, next year we're gonna set that up. If you ever next. have Vance Daniels on, ask him about my desk decorating capabilities. So I did that for his birthday one year. Vance Daniels. Oh, Vance, who oh, yeah, Kelly producer. and Vance worked together for a number of years as well. It's like a big happy family on this show. Everybody knows everybody. <laughs> I feel like Vance, like if he show, if he had a trap, it would involve uh, burning his cigar into the person's skin somehow. <laughs> Probably. Possibly. Probably. Probably. He's a badass. He's a badass. That's, uh, that's his, in his nature. Um, or real quick, I fell into some of Kelly's traps in training. <laughs> Don't mess with Kelly, folks. That's all you need to know. You don't. You don't. Everybody at that building knew, do not fuck with Kelly. It was just <laughs> known. It was known. She could walk in the room. You're like, oh, shit. Let me get the red carpet out. <laughs> like that. Well, that's Here, a great clean transition that off for, us. for you. There's some crumbs on there. Like, yeah, it was like that. <laughs> that's a good trap. So let's talk about the traps. I mean, that's the, the, the <laughs> that's what draws people into this movie. Because this movie, this movie kind of has what I like to call the Rocky Balboa style. We see a lot of training, prep, backstory, and then the finale big fight scene. And the big fight scene in this case are the traps. And they're memorable. We all have one that's favorite. And Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern are the, they give some of the best reaction comedy. Yeah. Ever. Like I, I will always laugh at Home Alone 2, where Joe Pesci catches his head on fire, the water's <laughs> not working, and he does a headstand onto the toilet, and then there's gasoline. In the yes, it and explodes and he's all yeah. And then you just see him he, he, the 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 dirt and soot so, on his teeth. He's like, ah! perfect. Like they gave a hundred percent with that. And here's the thing, Joe Pesci. You know, there's a lot of times where they would not give 100%. And I think that's what made this movie so good. That not that these villains are such A-listers in their own time. And it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah agreed. Yeah. But and what, we had a reunion of Daniel Stern and John Hurd, who were both in Chud together, Chud. reunited in Home Alone, even though they didn't share any scenes together. They were still in the film. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. But John Hurd went on to be a character in one of my favorite TV shows. The Soprano, he played a dirty cop. I forgot about yeah. that. Wow. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I totally forgot he was in that. I gotta that rewatch that show. Absolutely, man. I 
some of the writing now is outdated, but still like I've read interviews or heard interviews with made guys and they're like, they had to have somebody in our unit or in a crime family and help write that show. It's I, heard, I enjoy yes. it. I've heard stuff about that, like how shockingly accurate a lot of people found sure. that show. So yeah. Um, so yeah, Harry, all the ratchet fratch. Yeah, yeah. Ratchet- <laughs> great job, Joe Pesci. When he yeah. like burned his beanie and there were like pieces of it stuck on the top of his head. Yeah. Oh, oh this okay. is a good one. The so scream, that scream is beautiful. It's that's my favorite one. I that's agree because Mar, it's just pure Marv coming out. Like, dude, <laughs> you take a spider the size of my hand and put it on my face. I'm gonna scream and freak out like that too. Like, and that was a real spider. Yeah, real. yeah they like drop that right on his face. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my that's my daughter's favorite part as well, and that's unintentional. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's fantastic. Just so good. That's he just sells it with that scream. It, it just. Like, and you feel it because you're like, holy shit, if that was me, I would be screaming exactly the same way. So, yeah, I, I got to agree with uh, William that that's that's mine. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So if that's your guys is both your guys's favorite one. Uh, Dan, what's yours? I have to say the one my favorite one is probably one of the dumbest scenes from the first one. And it's where he sticks that the whole length of the BB gun out and neither one of them <laughs> see it. And he shoots him in the balls and the other yeah. guy's like, Oh, what happened? <laughs> and he sticks his head in there to see what's going on. And then like, he's like, hello. <laughs> how, how stupid were the other people you guys robbed? Like, let's go. Well, well I, I also so like when, that. Oh, I was going to say when Marv is investigating after Harry gets shot and he sticks his foot in there and his shoe falls off, he's just like, shit. He reaches in and grabs his shoe. Like, Marv, what are you doing, man? <laughs> I love, I love like how much that scene is milked. We just see the gun slowly come out. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like, we're just, we're just shaking because we know it's about to happen and we want to see it happen. And when we hear the, poof. <laughs> pissed Both. off he's cursing through his teeth oh like, again the reactions in that too were oh, fantastic yeah i agree 100%. i was crying absolutely crying um but real quick just ted wolf wanted to, let's give uh ted wood a shout out he, he was on his break say say hi to everybody hi, hey, wolf. hi, hi ted. ted wood you rock man thank you for joining us man we appreciate it but yeah no that, and one of the nice things about the traps with the, these movies, especially, is how well they're set up. But also, I didn't realize how they set the traps up, like not setting the traps up physically, but I mean, like setting up the fact that he's a mechanical genius very early on in the movie. When, like, did Kevin use a hot glue gun? Like, at the very beginning of the movie, when the parents are talking. Mm. And I never caught that until I watched it again today. And I was like, holy shit, they really dropped that he no shit very early on yeah that was yeah the thing i never really caught you know i think walk- his his response was hey i didn't catch the garage on fire yeah, yeah right yeah. right right like it's it's cool it's cool yeah and then he so, was using his dad's fish hooks for uh yeah. ornaments it, yeah. It is, but yeah but this movie like i said it it it's very well written i'm watching back catching all these little clues and hints and stuff like that it, it it's just um it's beautiful, and that's what makes this movie so good. And, there's... Uh, and I bring I bring that up because the new movies don't do what this one did. But no, sorry, totally what were you saying, Kelly? No, and th- there's the other thing. I mean, while the tarantula is probably one of my favorite, um, some of the things are super relatable. I mean, have you ever stepped on a nail? Oh, and then yeah. the ornaments. Oh my god! Oh. As an adult, I I die and I cringe every time. I mean, right. I still laugh and think it's funny, but. I feel their pain. <laughs> oh yeah! When he steps on that light bulb once he's in the house and it pops <sighs> on his toes, you're like, uh, "Oh God!" Like you can just yeah. feel the glass going into your foot. He yep. he hits him in the head with the uh, the paint can. I can just <laughs> feel the thud on my skull. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing I like, too, about the traps is that, you know, Kevin, every trap Kevin set should have killed those men time oh, and yeah. time again. Easily. And that's where the movie moves into fantasy. But that's what I like about it, because while it doesn't take itself seriously, it does kind of take itself seriously. And it allows you to enjoy the comedy for the prop comedy, the reactions of Marv and Harry and that type of thing. 
and when you move into the films after part two, it becomes slapstick comedy in cheap comedy. And I think that's what ruined it as well. Even though it's unbelievable comedy in Home Alone 1 and 2, they sell it so well you accept it, it for reality and it doesn't bother you. When you watch those other movies, you sit there and you're like, yeah, okay, dumb, yeah, okay. Because they don't try to sell it to you and they just present you with like slapstick. That's the best way I can describe it. The great way to, to echo what you're saying, it's like when Mo would take uh, a bandsaw on Curly's head, you know? Yeah, that would right. Obviously, tear someone's head up, but I believe it won't tear Curly's head up. I believe you throw it, bricks Curly from a four-story work. window onto somebody's skull five times; they're dead. Period. <laughs> exactly. Like, they're not walking away yeah. from that, man. Well, I saw I saw a meme where it's like, "Hey, man, this door's hot. Let go." And then it's like, <laughs> weirdest thing. I just shot a kid trying to hit us with a BB gun. And it's like Home Alone movie over. <laughs> yeah, he should have just kicked the door down, shot Kevin, and been done with it. There's a lot of things that should have been done, but you know, we're gonna let we're gonna let it slide. There's I a, just, real quick before we move on to the next. Oh, sorry, Dan. What were you saying? Yeah, let Dan I go. just thought of this because uh you were just saying, like, oh, they hinted at him being like a mechanical genius. But that scene where he rigs up the mannequins just, just to make yeah. them look oh, like yeah. they're dancing. Yeah. That, yeah. It's it's uh, building to you accepting that he can build all these traps on his own with everyday household items. Yeah. yeah. And I'll give people a little fun little gem watch. It's a horror Christmas comedy, but it's very it's very relevant to our conversation. It's called Better Watch Out and they got the kid sets a bunch of traps and they make su- they make a joke of Home Alone like when they, the paint can scene. So in this movie, they're going to do the paint can on somebody, and they're like, "This can't kill anybody." <laughs> it totally like bashes their face in, <laughs> back in there. It's so bloody in a gory movie, but it's so funny. So if, like, if you like, if you're that type of person who likes to take a joke further and like, oh my god, that's all. That's the movie to watch. So check that. I'll out. be watching that this weekend. Thank you. No problem. Uh, so let's talk about thoughts and theories. So, I, so this movie, obviously, you know, it came out in 92, but later on, you know, it, it this movie's so watched and, and obviously the internet, you know, they're always going to seek out details, you know, like, Ooh, you know, uh, what's this, what's that? Uh, and, you know, and they're all, their theories always are going to be found in movies. And these ones are fantastic. The ones I found, and we kind of talked about them over the break. But uh, we're going to talk about them right now just to get to it. So one of the ones that I found that was so interesting was Uncle Frank, who hates Kevin. All right. Does not yeah, like Kevin. I love Uncle it's Frank, made, man. It's made he's very a real clear. real character on that movie. Yeah. And he's very cheap. He it doesn't seem like he has money. You know what I mean? Like he's on the airplane, like put the crystals. Fill it up. Fill it up. Put it in your purse. Put it in your purse. Put it in your purse. But one would suggest that. Harry and Marv, because they wanted that house so badly, and they have so much sentiment to the McAllister house, that it's in fact uh, um, Frank, who is the mastermind behind the two. Mm. So there's this whole thing about going on. Have anybody, have you guys ever heard of that theory? Yes. And it kind of would make sense to me because uh, his brothers pay for his Christmas vacations two years in a row. If you look at both of them, so Rob picks <laughs> yeah. up this one, and then you know Kevin's dad picks up the other one. So <laughs> yeah, and he, even, and he could even pick up the the hundred and twenty two dollar bill for pizza. Oh you know? yeah, 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 yeah. He had traveler's checks. He didn't have cash. Like, oh, it's my brother's <laughs> house. No way. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, they needed us to hate him immediately, so they just made him a revolting character. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I totally agree. And his son yeah. Fuller, who wets the bed when he eats yeah. too much cola. <laughs> Fantastic. I love when he looks at and Kevin looks at him at one point. He's drinking and he looks at him and he goes, Yeah. <laughs> so like, Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. Yeah, go easy yeah. on the Pepsi. And then Real, did you uh, notice did you notice in the second movie they went from Pepsi to Coke? Like yeah, change sponsors. <laughs> like the reality, like I've watched these movies so many times that oh I pick God. up silly stuff like that. But yes, they they must have changed sponsors or brands. Well, Kelly, That's it's real so easy because at that time they were still doing Pepsi Challenge, and Pepsi was pulling customers away from Coke. Pepsi landed Home Alone. 
Home Alone exploded was number one movie. So Coke was like, we got to pay up and steal that in number two from Pepsi. And that's exactly what they did. Is the Pepsi challenge how much piss you can drizzle down from a bed? <laughs> I, I, Jesse, I understand you were I mean, not alive during the Pepsi challenge, but then, it was. Oh, go ahead. I'm go. just asking because it seems like you're you got a bed wetter. You're like, oh, let's see. Like the set. Here's the thing: horror movies. The biggest rule is more body count, more blood. So I'm thinking with this guy who pisses the bed, wetter sheets. More liquid, and I'm guessing that Coca Cola did the job. I'm oh, just it's it's got to be like when Freddy Krueger killed Johnny Depp. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I agree. Before before we get any further, I do want to say my favorite part of all the Home Alone franchises, and I I forgot about it till I watched it today, is John Candy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he ad libbed every single one of those lines. Did, nothing was scripted for that dude. That's, That's how well, comic yeah. genius he was. Well, he and was then him about... talking about leaving his son at the funeral. <laughs> at the funeral. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, he was okay after six or seven weeks. He started talking to us again. <laughs> and, and Catherine O'Hare, she had to be straight face during that whole thing. I don't know how she did it. I know they worked on SCTV for years, but my God, that was, oh, sure that was a comic was. class. Yeah. I'm sure she was dying on the inside I when she started with, with that story. <laughs> it's just like he was there all day. <laughs> Straight face. Uh, he didn't talk to us until six or seven weeks later. Like, he's, he was like that crazy uncle that you just don't talk about at family reunions or anything like right. that. Like you just kind of like tell your friends, "Oh yeah, well that's Uncle Dave. Don't, yeah. don't, don't talk yeah, to him." Yeah, <laughs> I have recently the... discovered I am that uncle. By the way, oh, oh, close to that, Dan. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. um, what about this theory though? So, let's say John Candy didn't die. Gus Polinsky would have to show up in New York City in Home Alone 2. Absolutely. How would Gus have shown up if John Candy didn't die? A polka tour. You know, he had yeah. to. Yeah. He was the polka king. Come on. He would have been playing, at some sort of tree lighting ceremony, playing in the park, something. Times Square, looking for money. The entire, uh, his entire polka band's out there playing. And Kevin walks by asking for directions. That would be much better than Donald Trump. I Wait. like it. I like it. I like it. Good job, Dan. I got that's, it. That's good. Or they could have just had like the band broke up. Everybody was down on their luck. All he's got's the polka jacket. And instead of the crazy bird shit lady in the park, it's Gus. <laughs> and then oh he introduces God. him to his mom and his mom's like, oh shit, I know this guy. And then now he becomes Uncle Gus in the family. Just like Uncle Buck with Macaulay Culkin. Boom. I, brought up I full feel circle. like I feel like she was like a blueprint for Susan Boyle or something like that. Like the resemblance is kind of uncanny hair and the way she talks. I mean, if she could really sing, 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 maybe, yeah. I don't know. I want to they... say that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was going to say that home on two did uh, give me a horrible idea. Cause like so now what I do, instead of giving money to homeless, I have a bag full of uh, dove ornaments and I just give a dove ornament now and be like, and if you have this and I have this, we'll be friends forever. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Get that knife. <laughs> they just knife. Yeah, they're gonna go sell that at the thrift store for three dollars and go get a little little crack rock or something, man. They don't give a shit about that turtle dove. Just like that woman bird lady didn't. She sold that shit for bird seed. If she was yep. smart, she would have sold it for a new coat and got herself a job at McDonald's. But instead, she just wanted to be weird lady in the park and goes after children. I mean, how is she not picked up for soliciting a minor? She yeah. took heaven <laughs> and broke into a concert hall and held him hostage there. How is she not being brought up on charges? Because the minor at question is a boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Look at that. <laughs> Dan breaking down the norms. I love it. Oh, I love it. Man, I, I have I have one theory that I created today when you guys said let's talk about home alone theory. <laughs> okay. Right Kevin, after his two run-ins, he decided when he turned 18 he's gonna change his name and move out of Chicago. He oh, really enjoyed this. New York City, so he went there and he graduated the police academy. Ooh. Now, 10 years later. When his estranged wife invites him out to Los Angeles, ah, it's like his childhood all over again. 
at the Nakatomi Towers. The Nakatomi <laughs> Towers. You had me at the New York police officer. I knew exactly oh. where you were going. I was like, Kevin's like, going. Uh, chain smoking and drinking problem as well. I mean, his parents very obviously didn't think about him that much. I mean, <laughs> what other kid want to be drinking it? And smoking all the time. And I'll echo you real quickly. How did John McClane know to put the C4, the computer, and the desk chair and tie that shit up and it was going to explode? That's some Home Alone shit right there, right? Yep. He took what was around the house yep. and he made it. That's yep. all I'm going to say. I mean, Even yeah, when he, he tied up the fire hose and jumped off the building, I mean, using your resources, man. The duct tape holster? Oh, the yeah. End? There you go. Yep. He tried so, to put on the other guy's shoes, but they were too small. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was thinking. He was thinking out there. So uh yeah, so that theory does hold some water. Um and do you do any of you guys know any other uh I have I have one more theory, but do you guys have any other theories? That Marv was Kevin McAllister's dad, and that's why they never <laughs> killed him. <laughs> there so, isn't go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, I, that one, I've heard, I, I feel like that's, I feel like that's legit. I feel like that, it, I feel, I feel like that's a, that could, that could be part of the fan theory. That's a very uh, interesting one. It is. So, is there anything, is there any, like, I, you said, what was the evidence for that? I'm very interested. It's just, it's just basically that, uh, Kevin's mom hooked up with Marv mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. he had known about the kid and that's really why they were so focused on robbing the McAllister house is because he had a bone to pick with the dad. Uh, and <laughs> basically, it's just like, that's why they never killed Kevin despite everything that they did. It's very true. I, he, I didn't know. He's the one that actually had more of an opportunity, like right during the gun scene. Yep. You know, he could have he could have done that then. And he kept telling him, oh, Harry, kids are stupid. It's, it's fine. You don't know that kid. You know, he was kind of trying to deflect it all along. Right. So going back to your um your your theory about him going, you know, Kevin McAllister becomes a cop and goes back to Nakatomi Plaza, Bonnie Bedelia is Macaulay Culkin's aunt. Get out of here. Oh, oh. man. Look, yeah. it's, the shit's coming around. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, that one came this. full circle, and I think that's worth noting. It is. It absolutely I did not know that. Thank you for knowing that. As it was just so you know how you click through articles on on the interwebs and stuff like that mm -hmm. because you know your phones and everything listen to you and I really do like Home Alone because I watch it all the time so the internet spies on me so every article that I see about it did you know I read it and I'm like oh wow and that's a little nugget that I held <laughs> there that is worked perfect that is for right now Kelly well played uh all right so we're gonna before we move on to our next topic because we're running low on time i want to throw out our producer there he is good. yes he can confirm the efficacy of the home alone traps <laughs> and he has stumbled into all of them at one time or another oh thanks <laughs> fancy pants we're oh, fancy pants next year's uh annual home alone trap fest it's gonna be amazing i can't wait we're, we're doing gonna it do we're, it. we're gonna do it man i can't wait i can't we're wait gonna, Let's All right, start. Jesse, move us on to our next topic. We're staying right on with Home Alone and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Oh, perfect timing. Yes. So I think we just all agree on two things right now, okay? Like we agree that, number one, uh, Joe, Be Joe Pesci is a talent that can't do no wrong. And then Correct. number two, and number two, uh, the sequels jumped the shark pretty damn fast with this series. Uh, I, oh, I disagree about Home Alone 2, but all sequels after Oh, I didn't talk about, I'm a, here's the thing. I don't count Home Alone 2 as a, a sequel. I count that like a Halloween, Halloween 2, same night scenario. Yeah. I love those two. I'm talking the third movie. It's, the third movie for oh. me is like the first sequel. Gotcha. Yeah. So that was the first one that came out when you were alive, right? Yes, yes. It had, uh, yeah, we had, um, what was it? We had the th the four terrorists that were hired yeah. by the North Korean government. Yeah. They so how, how did you how did you connect with that movie, Jesse? Did you think you were going to be fighting off Korean terrorists as you got older, and so you really connected with that kid? I watched that movie when I had chicken pox. And that that's what that was what connected me. So I'm you were delirious. You, the chicken pox <laughs> you were delirious, and you had a fever. That's why you think you liked that movie. I don't right? I, 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 I'm not going to 
I'm not going to dignify that answer, Kelly. I'm not going to dignify <laughs> it. I like you don't Kelly. have to. The entire interwebs is watching. You I, were delirious. Okay. In, in the defense for that movie, all right, uh, number one, still written by John Hughes, and I'm a John Hughes whore, okay? I got I to gotta say, love John Hughes movies. Um, even Baby's Day Out, fight me. Uh, wow. I know, wow. I know, I know. I, I, wow, I, yeah. I love how all you, like, sat back like I just pissed on the nativity scene. My bad, sorry. You can piss I, on that nativity scene all you want. You just said Boss Baby was good, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, I said Baby's Day Out, not Boss Baby. Or baby's Boss Day, who cares? They're both crappy movies. And you <laughs> <like them. laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's do it back. All right, that movie. All right, number one. Uh, I the traps were fun. All right, the, uh, the one guy got blown up in a in an igloo, and I totally got yeah. the shit out of that. <laughs> Uh, that one lady got drugged by a dog, and I found that funny. And then the remote control car thing was cool. What? How did she not lose an appendage? That dog would have mauled that off oh, and mauled. down to the bone, man. But I think what was also cool about this one is that nope, this kid actually took action, and nobody believed him. And he's like, "All right, I cried wolf. Nobody believed me. Now I'm going to catch the wolf." So I kind of like that. So. Like it was the kid taking matters into his own hands, so I guess that's fight why terrorists. I dug it. Yeah, what and grown adults can't fight terrorists, yeah. But just like, <laughs> and what was this kid you like five? Like, he, was he in hey, kindergarten or some shit? Last time I checked, grown adults couldn't catch two idiots going house to house robbing people until a child stepped in. Well, but you know, they were the wet bandits, and because of that calling card, they did get eventually caught. But yeah, it took a nine by Kevin, a creepy old man trying to have sex with them. To capture those <laughs> criminals. So. Yeah. Dude, he hugged uh, Kevin without his permission, man. What more do you need? He literally right. hugged him and, like, grappled him. If that's not a sexual assault, I don't know what is, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Got it. Uh, but anyways. Uh, but, yeah. So, okay. The third one, I'm going to say is still always debated. But I think we all could agree that the fourth, fifth, and the whatever the hell Disney did, oh. um, they pissed on the corpse in that case. I didn't they, even see the fourth or the fifth movie, so I have no frame of reference. The fourth those. movie, the fourth movie, they were like, "Oh, we're gonna have French Stewart play Marv. Harry's in jail." Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, yeah. that was my brain like resetting. Uh, yeah, French Stewart played Marv. Yes, but he played it like Harry, though. That was the weird part. He played Marv, the actual Marv character from Home Alone, but played it as if he was Harry instead. So he mixed the two personalities together. And then his wife or girlfriend's stupid. And there were no traps in that movie. They had a smart house. So all he kept was just like, hey, Google, flood the living room. And the living room flooded. Yeah, that that's not a that's not a cinematic treasure that you that's should be proud to say you watched all the way through. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. this Again, I, it was a hate fuck watch. All right, Kelly. I had, I had to see it to the end. I was angry, but I didn't watch the new one to the end. I gave up. I'll admit. Oh, I, oh you, you guys are weak. I watched that whole thing. I, I, I watched we'll it, but it. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll wait until I have a very good, talking point on that one. yeah well okay so let's do number five apparently there was a fifth movie that i didn't Holiday know about. Heist. i'm not gonna lie to you i drew my line in the sand and said no and i know that makes me a horrible host but i drew my line in the sand did, on that did one. anybody watch part five no <laughs> is that I, the I, one gonna... disney just released or no, no 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 that's the next one this is the holiday heist Oh, uh, no. Malcolm McDowell is in this movie. That tells you how bad it is. Malcolm McDowell is Michael! in regular. <laughs> Except for in Halloween, where Mac and Mac and Mac and I need to fuck some more. Kevin! <laughs> and he was in that horrible Star Trek Generations where they made every excuse possible to kill Captain Kirk when they didn't even need to kill Captain Kirk in order for the plot to happen, but they just wanted it to happen. Anyways, that's another show. Yeah, but Omelette, this one came out in 2012. Yeah, I'm reading uh, it. This sounds so horrible. I I mean, Malcolm McDowell's like in it. I might have to watch it now. I might have to watch it. 
I mean, did he was he just bored or I Malcolm mean... McDowell's been a paycheck actor since uh, what the eighties, and then occasionally he'll drop a decent one here and there. But I mean, look, the guy's getting paid, so I, I got no beef with it. But let's just be real his his filmography isn't that strong past like the late seventies into the eighties. Well, yeah, not really since A Clockwork Orange or whatever. <laughs> Just so everyone knows how old this movie is, it came out when Fox Family was called ABC Family before it turned to Freeform. Oh, oh. nice. That was during the JetX age, man. Yep. Uh, but anyways, I think it's safe to say we didn't watch this, and that's okay. I'm going to watch about it the now, one movie. Though. Let's talk about the movie that pissed us all off, and this uh, one, uh, Home Alone. No, Home Sweet, Home Alone. There you go. Okay, so first off, what a waste of a good comedy cast, number one. Right. Because yeah. you had Ellie Kemper, who I don't really like, but hey, people like her. That's great. Rob Delaney. You had Keenan Thompson, Pete Holmes, Chris Parnell. You all, And they did nothing to this movie. Yeah. Absolutely and nothing. I can't remember his name, but the bald-headed skinny dude with the bells, uh, he played in Community. Oh, you know, like you're talking about, yeah. Yes. Uh, the, he played the Dean. Which, yep. by the way, Oscar-winning writer right there. Oscar-winning writer. And totally just threw him away. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, garbage. But but going back to this, like, this movie, I didn't like that they focused on... So, I didn't, so here for this. Let's talk about the movie in parts, because I think we could all hate on this together as a team. So, number one, uh, Kelly, where do, since you are one of the biggest Home Alone fans, where do you want to start this hate fest? Like within the first five minutes, I cannot believe that Keenan did not have it written in his contract, just like Brian Cranston, to kill him off almost fucking immediately. That right. was <laughs> You're getting my name and that's it. I'm doing three scenes and then I better be I'm killed. I'm doing three scenes and I better be killed and you better pay me a lot of money. Yeah. I, I I I would have uh, I I would have wanted Keenan to go in the garage when the kid was sleeping in the car and just turn the car on and leave. And that would have been a good ending to the movie. Oh, he could have hung himself too. That would have been interesting. I mean, that would have been way better than what what happened. But yes, no, I'm surprised he didn't have it written in his contract. Yeah. Um, and Ellie yeah. Kemper with a bad haircut. Like, is she just oh. doing stuff for a paycheck now, or is the she bang. that desperate in <laughs> projects? Yep. Like she she's normally funny, but she just was not funny. Like none of them were funny. But and it, uh, one of the things I liked what you brought up real quick is. The two villains, so Rob Delaney and uh, and uh, El- Kelly Kempler, like just horrible villains. Like I didn't care for them, and I didn't want well, to care. They well, tried to make you villains, care about though? them. They weren't really they, villains. They were trying to make you care, and I didn't want to care. I didn't, I didn't want to care either. I didn't want to. I didn't care about their sob story. Marvin and Harry were just evil. All right, they right. Were just awful. Yeah, that's all I want. It was established. Dan, what did you think about about them as villains? <sighs> it's. I saw the whole movie in the first five minutes. Like it was, <laughs> is is very yeah. easy played out. And like they're making them the villains, but like they're just your normal American couple that really right. need this doll, or else their entire family's going to fail. So now they're the bad guys, right? And right, then like right. the dialogue that it opens oh. up on is oh. so atrocious. It is like, atrocious dialogue. Yeah, you had you had a poop joke like within the first like 3 minutes of it. Like, there oh, were well, several great. poop had, and fart yeah, jokes. Yeah. Well, yeah. He had so you know how many deviled eggs he had? Like, okay, seriously? Like right, you can't think right. of anything. And they're just taking jabs at like progressive-minded millennials. Like, oh, we like open space, blah blah. Oh, blah. yeah, that was like, annoying as hell too, man. Yeah, the generalizations in that film were just awful, man. They were terrible. It it's like they just based everything off of like just the most street jokes of street jokes and like like airline food. Am I right? Like that it was so just like stereotypes. Oh. It was the low hanging fruit. Every Bro. joke was the low hanging fruit. There was no highbrow, there was no like creative writing it was just let's go for the low-hanging fruit every time and it's like i'm tired of watching this like and and the people who wrote this movie uh upset me because they should know better uh the two people that wrote this movie you won't know the one because uh he's just a writer on snl but the other one is mikey day who's a cast member on snl yeah wow so i'm just like i literally had i looked up who wrote this because i was pissed off 
and and they've written and they've written some really good comedy sketches. Like they wrote some really good stuff. So to put this out there and be like, yeah, this is the shit. And what makes me more upset is now they're going to do Inspector Gadget live. Like, oh, oh God, no! Oh, oh my God! Do you understand how much? Like, I just want to hang myself in a closet oh. knowing that. I oh, love it. That's a bad Gadget. idea. Like, that's it's gonna, a really it, bad we're, idea. We're gonna have Go Go Gadget fart, and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk right out of my own house if I see that. Uh, I, mean, I, I assume <laughs> it's screaming. I wouldn't put that piece of shit in theaters, but. Do you- do you think they were just like hard up for COVID money? Like when things were. Oh, I yeah. Don't know. It's a Disney it a paycheck. Yeah. 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 Paycheck picture. But the thing with Disney is like, you know, you they they I've seen they put out some really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, live action in the last year. I mean, in the last couple of years, most of Marvel, but still had a good humor that could reach adults and kids. I mean, you have Pixar that does the same thing, too. So to see this this franchise, right. Home Alone, which has been beloved, and they could have said, like, hey, look, you know, four pissed everybody off, five pissed everybody off, three was a really good try. People actually do love it. Uh, you know. You mean you love it? <laughs> like, you, you are people? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> is I'm going to say I'm in the population. I'm going to say that, Kelly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. You and three of your friends love that movie. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my three friends. Yeah, and we're going to watch it tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sarah, we're watching it, all right? My wife. <laughs> so, See? Smart um, woman. <laughs> I, I've got like three major things, little okay. talking points that they're out for this movie. Number one, I absolutely loathe the way it's edited. I don't oh. know who edited that movie, but I am sick and tired of people editing movies like comic books. Please stop doing that. Like, don't do that. You're just ruining everything. It was so annoying to follow scenes that were paneled together and transitioning and overlapping. It's the most distracting and annoying thing possible. Number two, the way that they shot the film. So, Jesse, you and I watch a bunch of those. I'm not going to say they're B movies, but they're just non-theater release, like horror movies and horror Christmas movies on Amazon. All of those films are shot the same way. They have the same color palette. They have the same camera movements. They have the same camera transitions. When you see one of those movies, you know the movie you're watching because you've literally seen that in 12 other movies, exactly the same presentation. And that's how this movie is presented. And it just looks so fucking cheap. Nothing looks real. You can clearly tell this is shot on a sound sound stage with horrible sets. When they're outside, those stone walls of the houses look better in 1930 Robin Hood movies than they look in this fucking movie. It is so terrible. And then number three is who's the fucking main character? It's certainly not Max the Kid. Maybe oh, it's the parents that are the villain, but this is Home Alone. It's supposed to be about the kid. He's only in half the scenes. And then there's no there's no message at the end. They try to give you a message by saying, oh, forgive and everybody be friends. No, no, no. There were specific messages in Home Alone 1 and 2. This one, it, all it does is just try to give you a bunch of shit. And then at the end, it's like, oh, hey, here's our message of be happy and and forgive people for breaking into your house and you trying to kill them. And then all the property damage they caused. And then this asshole kid stealing the doll. And now we're all happy because we don't have to move. Get out of here. That, But Quentin, Car- Quentin Tarantino always says there's one positive. You got to find one positive about the movie. I did find something positive. I actually enjoyed the dad in terms of his being in between careers and that he was in data migration and he was phased out of his job because cloud was taking over and he was struggling to find a job leave, you know, bridging data or data management or data migration to the cloud. That's really happening right now in the IT world. And I thought that was hilarious because that was the only thing in my opinion that was grounded in reality in this movie. So I actually enjoyed that. I thought it was funny Anytime he tried to talk about his job and people are like, "Eh," because that's when people ask me about my job, it's a long winded answer. 
and people respond that way. So I can relate to that. And I thought that stuff was funny. So I want to give that credit because I did like that. The one credit I'll give this movie, and this is the movie that this is what catfished me, was uh, I, I, I found the Easter egg that the fact that McAllister security systems was a thing. I yeah. found that pretty cool. And, and part of me was like, oh, they might actually give a shit about the sequel. Well, that and Buzz was the cop, too. Hey, Buzz so. was the cop. And then he says the one line. Yo, we left my brother home twice. He's just screwing with me. Right. You know? <laughs> like I, that was very funny. But other yeah. than that, I was disappointed the rest of the way through. Kelly, Dan, any any positives from the movie for you guys? I think bringing Buzz back, but that wasn't enough to save it for me. But Agreed. it, it kind of gave me some nostalgia for yeah. that. Um, I mean, if Disney were going to get a hold of this with Disney money, you would think that they would try to do what they did in the first two and maybe try to bring a Home Alone years later and try to get yeah. those original cast members back. But they didn't. So I'd love to see that movie. Even I, though I would, John Hurt is gone, I would still love to see it. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I think we're forgetting the fact that it was very ambitious of the Hallmark Channel to film a Home Alone movie, but they did, oh my god. It is a Hallmark Channel movie. It looks just like yep. a Hallmark movie. Oh my god, it is. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you guys, the camera angles that they use, like the, the perspective, uh -huh. the tracking shots that they use, it's all in the, the – watch any Hallmark movie. Dan, you're absolutely right. It oh looks exactly god. the same. Like this movie, the presentation I hate, wise. I hate how correct you are with that statement. <laughs> Dan, you nailed it, man. You absolutely nailed it. That's exactly it. The only thing the movie missing is a white woman looking for love in a small town. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's on her journey to find Wait. herself after leaving her abusive husband. Let me rewrite the movie this time. <laughs> Give me two seconds to rewrite the movie, real fast. All right, we recast Ellie Kemper. We have her as a blonde, uh, and she's she's a she's a hardworking crook who can't just score the right house. The king can <laughs> partners her with somebody who's straight laced, and they don't get along. Yeah, and after yeah. being brutally almost beaten to death by kids, they come together and they love each other. There you can go. Can we just talk real quick about how horrible the traps were? Like, I felt bad because I like the kid that plays Max. I like that kid. I do like that kid. I, I, do. I wanted to relate to him the way I related to Kevin, but they wouldn't let me do it. And so, like, they gave him traps that would just piss me off if I was a grown adult. Like, none of them were deadly. So all you're doing is just making me mad to when I finally get to you, I'm going to snap your neck really slow. Like, I mean, that's just what's going mean, to happen. That just went dark, but yeah. Um, for <laughs> I mean, if he keeps pissing me off, I'm getting more mad. I'm trying to get this doll. Like, I'm going to kill you, kid. And it's going to be slow and intimate. And I'm going to look into your eyes as you die. I mean, Okay. I mean, yep. for me, it's the fact that this kid did something illegal. And now he's the hero of the story because <laughs> he really messed up somebody's Christmas because he was upset. <laughs> He was a little shit. I, he was so unlike. Here's the thing. Um, I love that actor. He he played the the friend in Jojo Rabbit. And he was hilarious in that movie. But I like movie, him. This movie, such a piss ant. I was like, I was like, please fall down the stairs and twist your neck or something. Just like they tried you know. to equate him to Kevin McAllister in the first they movie. They like, oh, that was, family they should let him be his own character. Yeah, he was just a prick. Yeah, yeah, you know they. Sh yeah, you're right. They should have let him be his own character, like Alex in Home Alone Three. They did great. With <laughs> oh, that. you remember his name? <laughs> that that is so sad. Right. So sad. Good. <laughs> yeah, you remembered his name. I'm standing like, my ground. Why are you standing thinking about seven year olds, Jesse? Shut the hell up! All right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Shots fired. All right. Whatever. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know we were taking cheap shots below the belt, but okay, that's fine. That's fine, John. That's it's fine. Christmas. Uh... <laughs> We're trying to work hard here. No, we worked really hard. So did washing machines. Sorry, I had to get the Christmas vacation joke out. Uh, but anyways. But yeah, so... Uh, now I know we're we're a little over time right now, but let's... Uh, now we're winding down. We've got a couple. We can do wind a couple down. more. We, we can wind down. So, do you want to do another topic real quick, or do we want to close out? What do you think? Oh, let's uh, let's 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 close it out a little bit. Let's go. Right. Let's get to close it out because I know with us how diehard we are, we'll go at another hour. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, easily. 
But with with that being said, you know, it, what, these movies, they're iconic. There's a reason why they're watching <laughs> well, two of them are two of them are iconic. Two of them, I mean, yeah. You know, and I guess that third one that Jesse really likes Alex in, but you know. <laughs> right. so done. All right, whatever. <laughs> anyway, yeah. hey, okay, real quick, real quick. Uh, um, yeah, here we go. Here we go. He had to he had one of the most badass songs in that movie. This is my town. Watch your thing. He dance, dance bobbing his head. He knows what I'm talking about. Dan, <laughs> when that song plays, you know shit's about to go down. Am I right? Am I right? right? <laughs> Damn right. Yeah, he's a legend in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyways, well, next year when we have our annual, our first annual Home Alone Traps, we could debate the merits of the third movie being good, which it is. But anyways, so let's wind this shit down. This uh, home, Kevin McAllister was made iconic by Macaulay Culkin. He was. Yep. Every line he delivered was accurate, perfect. Like, I love the one scene where he's at the store and the the, the lady holds up the army men and she, he's like, for the kids. Like, just <laughs> brilliant. Like, he's got some growth deficiency thing like Gary Coleman going on, but everyone's <laughs> afraid to bring it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, this movie, like I said, had brilliant cameos, had a strong supporting cast. I mean, yeah, yeah an Oscar winner. Uh, at the time, yeah. Didn't he have the Oscar by then? When did Goodfellas come out? Goodfellas came out in 90. So this is 92. No, Home Alone was 1990. You're two years off. Oh, oh, I'm thinking of the sequel. I'm thinking of... Uh, well, that was 91. I think Goodfellas was 91 as well. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Home Alone 2. Home Alone, I think that's two. Home, Alone, Home Alone 2 is 92. Okay, I was wrong. Goodfellas was 1990. It came out in September, and then Home Alone came out in the holiday season. So, yeah, yeah. Goodfellas came out first. Man, what a hell of a year Pesci had that year. Yeah, what man. Hell, you had, like, one of the greatest comedies ever and the one of the most iconic roles he's ever done. So, good yeah. for him. But yeah. anyways, like I said, top to bottom, this movie's great. That's why it's iconic. That's why it's almost what now? Uh, 31 years later, and we're mm -hmm. discussing it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a reason. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, any closing statements? Kelly, Dan, anything you want to say to uh, close out the show regarding this movie? Any I thoughts? know Dan's got something. Uh, I mean, for what it symbolizes for me, like Home Alone, I think that's the first movie I ever saw where I felt like, yeah, my family treats me like that. Yeah, I'm never mm -hmm. noticed. And I think that's why it's it's has lasting power. It's because... Mm -hmm. As a kid, seeing at five, six years old, you're like, yeah, I hate my brothers and sisters. Right. Yeah, my parents treat me like this. So, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to piggyback off what, uh, what Dan said. Um, it wasn't just the stuff that was outrageous because there were things that he did in that movie that we've all done as kids. Well, if you were crazy like me and my brothers and sisters, like the sled down the stairs, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, we've done way worse things. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did crazy <laughs> stuff that we we're going to, you know, that we should be dead right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. no, and as did, he, as did he. So it made it relatable and they paid attention to the details in the story. But again, every time I hear that music, uh, I know it's Christmas time. I totally agree. And with that music, it's not only the John Williams score, it's the actual Christmas music used for the longest time when I was a kid, because that Christmas music they use is so iconic. When I would hear other Christmas music, I'd be like, what the fuck is this shit? I want to hear real <laughs> Christmas music. And my parents were like, what are you talking about? And we watched Home Alone and I'm like, that Christmas music, that's <laughs> real Christmas music. So then they found this random CD at Farmore Anybody who grew up in oh Dublin, my god, yeah, yeah, oh my god, far more, yeah, everybody knows about far more, and uh, it just so happens that it had all those songs on it. It wasn't a soundtrack; it was just a generic compilation. And we played that CD every Christmas because, to me, that was the real Christmas music. So, just excellent job picking out both uh, scored music and uh, studio recorded music. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll that'll wrap up our time here. I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, joined us today and uh, lit up the comment section. Ted, Tom, William, and our producer Vance, who produces the goods, man. That's what he does. I want to give a hand to Kelly and Dan for joining us. 
excellent job, you Thank two. You. you guys stellar all the Thanks, way. Thanks, guys. Um, anyways, keep tuning in. Uh, next week, John and I will have another surprise for you uh, here at the Grown Up Stable. So stay tuned and keep an eye on our page. And make sure you go to YouTube and like and subscribe. Uh, we got a lot, plenty of good content already there. So go and check it out. As well as uh, make sure uh, check out tomorrow. This episode will be up. So if you didn't get to watch the whole thing, that's where you watch it, man. So I'm going to be uploading it as soon as the show is up. Uh, and, uh, and I want to say, uh, thanks again to Ryan Francis for having us on his telethon. What a great time it was to talk about Christmas vacation. So quick shout out to Ryan Francis, but until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the grown-ups table. Thank you. And have an awesome night, everybody. Take care. Happy holidays.